is Sarah with College Success Central here talking to you about my favorite new awesome mind mapping tool, which is called MindMeister. Um, my cat Jade is also in the room, so you may hear her kind of put her two bits in as well. But I wanted to talk to you today about this really nifty tool. Now, some people, hi Jade, are natural outliners. They like the flow of indentions, and they don't really get confused about, you know, all that anal stuff like whether to use a large A or a small A for section two topic, gay subparagraph, whatever. But other people hate straight lines. They know as they learn more about their paper, they'll be moving things around, combining and separating different topics, being able to organize their thoughts in different ways. And they generally want to have that ability to see their thoughts in something other than a straight line. Now, those of you who are out there, and I know y'all are out there, y'all will love mind mapping. Now, I'm kind of a dyed-in-the-wool outliner. I think it kind of comes with that whole librarian thing. I like everything tidy. But I still use mind maps for a lot of things, like brainstorming and my strategic planning for uh, College Success Central. And I can and I do even use it for creating blog posts, as I'll show you today. I'm actually going to create a mind map for one of my favorite articles I've written for College Success Central, uh, Why Essay Mills Are Evil. I'm going to show it to you really quick. If you haven't read this, you really need to check it out. It's over on the page, and I'll have a link to it below this video. It just talks about all the reasons that essay mills are evil, and you do not need to be spending any money on them. But I know just me saying that is not enough. I have to create a good argument, just like you have to create a good argument in your research paper. So we're going to talk about that. So to create a mind map in MindMeister, all we have to do is create an account, which I've already done. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit New Mind Map to create a mind map. And you can do different formats. If you've seen my Prezi um, uh, video that I did a few weeks ago, this is very similar to that. I think I'm just going to use the brainstorming format. That should be fine. It's creating the map. It's doing its thing. OK, and we have our map created. So what we need to do is we need to sort this stuff out. So first off, I want to change this middle central node to whatever the main topic or title of my post is or my theme. So what I want to change where it says brainstorming, I'm just going to delete that out and I'm going to type essay mills are evil exclamation point. And because I feel really strongly on this point, we're going to bold that, of course. So, essay mills are evil. Okay, great. That is, uh, I feel that very firmly, but I've got to do more than say essay mills are evil because College Success Central says so. Essay mills are evil for these reasons. So, we're going to take a look at these reasons. So, what are some reasons? Well, here's some things that came to me as I was thinking about what I wanted to do with this, this picture. I'm going to take out this image, and we are going to get into the first subtopic. So one of the reasons that essay mills are evil is that using an essay mill is dishonest. And it is because you are presenting somebody else's work as your own. So I will create one of these sub nodes and I'll type that in. And then the other thing I kind of want to mention, I sort of get thinking about that, is, is your intellectual integrity, keeping your intellectual integrity, is sort of the prime directive of higher ed. Yes, well, y'all know I'm a nerd already, so it's okay for me to go there. So prime directive. But, you know, as much as I know that everybody who follows my blog and reads my sites and watches my video, all of you are totally honest people, I may need to give a few more reasons than that. So I will add some other things in here, like waste of money. And then I had a sub idea under that, which is an experiment 
by Dan Ariely, where he actually bought a paper from an essay mill and found out just how horribly written and plagiarized and all that kind of thing it is. And I talk a little bit more about that on the blog post. But then I can add in more sub things. And I can add in other topics, like say, I also want to talk more detail about the risk of plagiarism. And I want to talk about the fact that probably the people who run these kinds of businesses are not the most ethical in the world. I don't know for that for sure. I'm not about to go slander anybody, but it seems like a logical need to make. And then let's say I want to add in a couple of more points because there are a few more things I want to mention in here as well. I can just go over to plus. Actually, I want to go here because I want a main idea, plus new node, and that's a good thing to remember. You want to go to the level above where you're putting in a new node before you put it in, and I want to put in that you won't learn anything because you won't. And then if I wanted to add new subpoints to that, I could do so like thus. And then the other thing that I wanted to do in this is I wanted to mention a really nifty tool that I like that people can use to check their pla for plagiarism before they even turn a project in, which is called Write Check. It is by the same folks who make Turn It In if you run into that for your college classes, but it's actually something you can run your paper through before you turn it in to make sure that you are good on the plagiarism front and that you haven't done anything by accident. And the cool thing is, I would suggest when you're writing a paper, just throw some stuff down. Don't worry about it being pretty. This is really messy and there's a lot of empty stuff, but I wouldn't worry about this if I were just getting started because I'm going to revisit it. I'm going to move things around and put things under other things. Like I might decide that I want to talk about right check in my plagiarism section, so I would move it down there and things like that. This interface, as you can tell by looking at it, is just so darn intuitive. Now, I'm showing you the free version right now, and it is awesome, and it includes all of the core functionality you need. But if you're going to be working on a project with a group, or more importantly, if you want to be able to email or share, save to other fi file formats, you might want to think about it upgrading to a paid account. Now, I'm an affiliate of MindMeister because I love it so much, I'm willing to put my uh, website's name behind it. So if you click the link to MindMeister that is right below my video and sign up and play with the free version and really like it and then eventually decide to go pro, I will get a tiny commission. Now, I'm not real big on the idea of tip jars for websites, but buying through my link can be a real win-win situation. Um, I get the things I need to keep this site going, and you get a great resource that will help you succeed in college. So if you're interested, please click below, go ahead and get started with the free account, and then just play around. You may find that this is exactly what you need to organize your thoughts for your next research paper. Thank you for hanging around today, and please stay tuned to the blog. Next week on College Success Central, we are finally going to actually start drafting our research paper. And we're going to discuss the steps that you need to take to turn all of these sources and ideas into an A-worthy piece of writing. So keep smiling, and I'll see you all soon. Have a good one.